A scholar in our church recently said that writing wasn't developed enough for Moses to actually write down the Pentateuch. He said, it's not like Moses was carrying around tablets that he wrote all this down on. That threw me a bit, and I didn't know what to make of it, because I thought the Egyptians were using papyrus long before that. Can you comment on this and how it was likely originally recorded? Yeah, I mean, I've I've made the comment before as well that Moses isn't carrying a tray of cuneiform tablets along with him, you know, during the Exodus, because... You know, you, a lot of the content in Genesis does hook into Babylonian texts. And, and I've said on, before in the podcast, my suspicion is that either that Genesis 1 through 11 was either, you know, written during the exile or was heavily edited, again, using the Akkadian Babylonian material to, to articulate a polemic, a theological polemic in those 11 chapters. And that, if that's the case, well, then, you know, since that's part of the Torah, then, you know, you have that the same question arise uh, for different reasons, you know, about the rest of the Torah. My view is, again, just generally, and I'll get to the, to the specifics of the question, is that I, I don't accept JEDP, the, 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 you know, the consensus view among scholars that the, the Pentateuch, the Torah, was not written at all by Moses. It's a, it's a patchwork quilt of sources and so on and so forth. I don't accept that view, but I also don't accept the, the traditional view that Moses, you know, wrote, wrote the Torah, you know, 99% of it or 100% of it. Uh, I think it's somewhere in the middle. I'm what used to be called a supplementarian, and there are different reasons for that. Now, uh, that is preparatory to say, you, you, you should have detected in that answer, that I don't have a problem with Moses being able to write stuff in the Torah. There were another reason that this you know, scholar in this church said this. He's really basing this on the fact that there are no Paleo-Hebrew inscriptions that we know of that are earlier than 1000 BC. I have to know a little bit about Hebrew. The, the, the Hebrew that you're used to seeing today is not the original Hebrew script. Uh, there's a Paleo-Hebrew script that would have been used you know, by Moses or anybody else in, in greater antiquity. The, the script that you're familiar with now comes uh, out of the Babylonian exile. Uh, it, it's an adoption of, of you know, Aramaic in that case, the, the script that they were using there, and that you know, is, is referred to as the block letter style. That is not, again, what Hebrew letters look like in the biblical period, okay, something before 1000 BC or even, even a little bit later than that. So if you look at that material that's been recovered from the ancient world, there are no Hebrew inscriptions that, I'm, I'm just using round numbers here, that are earlier than 1000 BC. Well, if Moses lived, you know, 1400 BC, he is when he died, you know, 1525 to, you know, 1405 BC, you know, obviously he's living in the period for which we do not have epigraphic or inscriptional evidence for Old Hebrew. So that's really what, what's behind this statement. Now, having said that, it's an assumption. That's all we have here on, on, on this person's part. It is, of course, an assumption that this means, the fact that we don't have inscriptions older than 1000 BC in Old Hebrew, that's an assumption that that fact, that absence in the archaeological record, means that the written form of Hebrew wasn't developed. You can't really draw that conclusion. You could have written Hebrew developed, and maybe we just don't have stuff that you know, was produced in it. I mean, if you think about the Hebrews, you know, why, why do we have inscriptions from any culture? It's because they had a settled civilization. There was the occasion, the need to produce documentary evidence like, you know, stela or inscriptions or whatever, economic records. None of this applies to the Hebrews in Moses' day. The reason that, that would, you know, I wouldn't expect there to be you know, like original tablet forms or you know, on any medium, you know, of the Torah in Old Hebrew, is because the Hebrews weren't a settled people. There, there's no reason for them to produce material that we can point at and look at. It's, oh, yeah, you know, the Hebrews living back, back around Moses' time, they, they were literate. Look at, look, at that, look at that inscription there. Why would they produce it? They're not settled in a land. I mean, what's the point? They're not, they're not producing receipts or economic records like you see with cuneiform tablets. They don't have any of that. They're wandering around in a desert. You know, they're, they're, they're on their way to a land. And once they get in, you know, they got to you know, basically start the whole thing from scratch, you know, their, their civilization. So it, there's, there's not a necessary connection between the absence of inscriptional data 
and the idea that the language itself wasn't developed in writing. So that's the first problem in the historical circumstances. Now, Moses would have been highly literate if we accept the biblical account of the guy Moses. He would have been highly literate as someone trained in Pharaoh's household. He'd be expected to read and write Egyptian and very likely Akkadian, at least be able to read Akkadian. And that's especially true if the Exodus was a late Exodus. Just think that the 1200s BC instead of the early date. If you don't know what I'm talking about here, go, go listen to the first four or five episodes of the Book of Exodus series. If it's a later date, this is especially true that Moses would be literate in Egyptian and Akkadian writing because Akkadian was the language of international correspondence during this period. The Tel El Amarna letters okay, are written in Akkadian. It's a correspondence between Pharaoh and his underling authorities in what we would call now the Holy Land in, in, in Palestine. It's, a, it's all Akkadian. It's not Egyptian, it's Akkadian. So if the Hebrew language, again, had been put to writing, there is no reason to suppose that Moses wouldn't have known that language, that script as well. I mean, he, he, you know, he knows Egyptian, he knows Akkadian. If Hebrew, again, the language of his native you know, people, if that has been put into writing, there's no reason to suspect that he wouldn't know it. Now, it is a reasonable expectation that that language had a written form since, because, the Proto-Sinaitic inscriptions date to 400 years earlier than the late date of the Exodus. Again, if you, if you don't know what those are, the Proto-Sinaitic inscriptions are important because they are the beginning of the Semitic alphabet, okay? Where someone had some of the turquoise mines in Sinai, okay? And this predates the, the, the early date of the Exodus. So this has nothing to do with the Exodus, okay? But you've got somebody who's taking Egyptian characters and using them to create an alphabet. And the inscriptions that are in that Egyptian-looking alphabet are Semitic. Okay, they conform to the, to the, to the grammar of, of, of Semitic languages. Okay, we don't know who those people were. There's no way to identify them, again, despite you know, claims to the contrary. I mean, there, there are people out there that say, oh, we, we know that the biblical Hebrews produced the proto-Sinaitic inscriptions. Well, actually, you don't because all of the features that can be known from those inscriptions are also parts of other Semitic languages. There's no way to directly tie it to the, the Hebrews in, you know, the Bible. Okay, there, there's no way to do that, even though you know, people, it's a nice idea, wouldn't that be cool? But you, you got nothing there, okay? So all that to say, I think there, that this conclusion that this scholar, again, in, in your church drew, it's based upon a, a point of fact, this data about we don't have a Hebrew inscriptions past, you know, or earlier than 1000 BC. But it requires making certain assumptions about what that means that I don't think really hold together well. Or let, let me just be more charitable, that, that lack certainty. So, again, if Moses is who the Bible says he was, he's going to be highly literate. If the language of his people exists in an alphabet, you better believe that there's no reason to conclude he wouldn't know that. Okay. Again, so, you know, we don't know one way or the other, but it's a reasonable thing to conclude that, yeah, Moses could have written stuff. 